My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College, the Maritime Technology and Training Center in Houston, Texas. This is part two of my plotting series, Determine a New Course and Speed, or basically the second triangle. In order to complete this video, you need to have a solid understanding and foundation of everything in part one of the video series, Basic Radar Triangle. The objectives for the second triangle to find a new course or speed. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to one, determine a new course to steer in order to maintain a required CPA. Two, you'll be able to determine a new speed in order to maintain a required CPA. First, we'll find a new course. Determine a new course in order to maintain a required CPA. So our required CPA is going to be two nautical miles. And our execution point, or MX, is going to be five nautical miles. So when this contact tracks down this relative motion line and they get five miles away from me, then I'm going to alter course for the, to find my new course. So we need some new labeling beside E, R, and M in the basic triangle. We're going to need this execution point, or MX, where we're going to make this course or speed change, and an R prime, which will indicate our new course or our new speed. So here's our basic plot, E, R, M triangle. E to R, we're heading due north, and the contact is heading northwest execution point or MX is at five nautical miles. For me to make a course change, I need to change the triangle and create a second triangle. So if I change course on a relative motion radar, I'm going to change relative motion. Therefore, I'm going to need a new relative motion line. And I'm going to draw that new relative motion line from MX to, to just touch the tangent of my required two mile CPA. Then I'm going to transfer or parallel this new relative motion line up into the triangle. Most schools teach the candy M and M's, M MX the M06. So let's transfer or parallel this new relative motion line to M06 and draw a long line out to starboard. Presently, we're going due north, our E to R, so we want to alter course to starboard. So we need to get our compass. We're going to stab E and swing R00 to starboard until it just touches that new relative motion line, and that's going to be my R prime. Some people call it RC for revised course. That's fine. The original course was E to R00 going due north. But since I alter course to starboard, my new course is going to be E to R prime. To find out what that new course is, I need to parallel or transfer that E to R prime to the middle of the plotting sheet. And we're going to find out that this new course is going to be about 0 0.42, 0 0.43 degrees. That's my new course. So when this contact tracks down this relative motion line and they get to MX, I'm going to alter course to 0 42 degrees. If I turn to starboard, use following relative motion rules, it's going to appear that they're going to turn to starboard. Then they'll start to track down this new relative motion line. If the contact starts falling within our required CPA, we just have to scoot over a little bit. We do not have to do a whole nother plot. If a go further out than two miles, that's fantastic. The master doesn't get upset. We don't get an ISM uh, CPA violation. We burn up a little more, more fuel and everybody's happy. If you want to know what time your new CPA is going to be, you can just continue walking down your relative motion line like measuring distance on the DR track line that we learned in part one of this video series. So we have 
R00, we have minute 6, we have minute 12, we have minute 18, we have minute 24, minute 30, minute 36. And to find out what time this new CPA is going to be, you find another CPA, another right angle from that new relative motion line to the middle. So we can interpolate about what time this is going to be. So it's going to be approximately 34 minutes will be our new CPA. Also where that new CPA is would allow us to come back onto our original course. So here's a bigger picture of this course change. We're going to parallel or transfer our new relative motion line from MX to M06 and draw that new relative motion line out to starboard. With our compass, we're going to stab E and swing R00 to starboard to where it touches that new relative motion line, and that's our R prime. The original course was due north, E to R00. My new course is going to be E to R prime. I parallel that E to R prime to the middle of the plotting sheet to find out what that new course is. Sometimes we cannot change course. Maybe we have traffic off our starboard side. Maybe we have shoal water off of our starboard side. So we cannot change course to starboard. We're going to have to change speed. So in this section, we're going to find a new speed. We're going to determine the new speed in order to maintain a required CPA. Our required CPA is still two nautical miles. And the execution point or MX is going to be five miles away. This is the same example that I used before. MX is still at five nautical miles. Course changes and speed changes are done exactly the same way. If I change course on a relative motion radar, I'm gonna change relative motion. If I change speed on a relative motion radar, I'm gonna change relative motion. So I still need this new relative motion line from MX to touch the tangent of my required CPA of two miles. We're still going to parallel or transfer MX to M06, M and M's, and still draw that same new relative motion line out to starboard. Instead of changing course by stabbing E and swinging R with our compass, now we can just measure the distance to the intersection of our E to R speed vector and that new relative motion line. And you can look right now, it looks like we're gonna slow down to approximately 10 knots. So when this contact tracks down this relative motion line, they get five miles away from me at MX, I slow to 10 knots and the contact will pass ahead of me by two nautical miles. Here's the new speed review. We're going to parallel our new relative motion line from MX to M06. Instead of stabbing E and swinging R to find a new course, we're going to find the intersection between our speed vector and the new relative motion line. Remember E is zero knots and R is 20 knots in our example. So wherever the intersection is between our speed vector and that new relative motion line is going to be our R prime and we can slow to that speed. Just measure the distance between zero knots to the intersection of our speed vector and the new relative motion line. Take that distance to the 12 mile scale and you will know what speed to slow down to when the contact reaches the execution point.
Yes. So to review our objectives in this presentation, we learned how to determine a new course to steer in order to maintain a required CPA. We also learned, too, to determine a new speed in order to maintain a required CPA. If you have any questions about this video, you can email me at my campus email, web, uh, email at ashley.kessler at sjcd.edu.